You're listening to KUCI 88.9 FM in Irvine. The opinions and views expressed in this program do not reflect those of KUCI, its management, or the UC Board of Regents. To find out more about this talk show or other talk shows broadcasting on KUCI, log on to our website at KUCI.org or check out the latest program guide. This is Ashton Marcus, and I'm on location at La Mirada Theater for the Performing Arts for the McCoy Rigby production of Ain't Misbehavin'. Hi, my name is Ashton Marcus. I'm with KUCI 88.9 FM in Irvine. And I'm here with... You were here with Boise Holmes. Yeah. I play the role of Ken Page in the musical um, Amy's Behaving here at La Mirada. Having a blast, man, I tell you. Having a blast. Yeah, what's your take on your character? Well, I mean, I, I, I love it. The thing about it, it, was, it was, I wouldn't say it was pressure from Ken, but it was such an honor to be able to, like, you know, uh, uh, bring to life again that, you know, Ken Page and uh, to be directed by him. Uh, you know, it was so much, just so much fun, man. I mean, mine is, we, me and Andre have the great contrast, you know. Andre's a sweat guy, I'm more the up, you know, upstanding type of, I just had a blast, man. It's a, re- a really, good, really good time, yeah. You guys sang for, was it two hours? Oh, man, are, are you exhausted? Great. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. Well, you know, actually, I could do it one more time. Yeah, I'm not that exhausted. I'm good, yeah. I love this music, but I, I think, I don't see it that much anymore, because I, I'm not sure if it's appreciated. Some people are a little offended by it. What are yeah. your thoughts on that? No, no, no. I mean, it, it is what it is. It's, it's, it's classic. It's, it's music, man. I mean, this is this is what it is. It's the truth, and it was what was going on, man. And we celebrate fats forever, man. His music never dies, so that's what it is, man. One more quick question: In this type of performance, you were more of a performer than you were a musician. You're presenting the song. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, well, I mean, you know, you got to do a little bit of both, uh, but it needs to trace true to the character and to the time. So I think we all just had a good time, kind of doing both, both performing, and then a lot of us are musicians as well. So it kind of just oozes out of us, you know. So it was an honor, again. Thank I you. just love you. Thank you very much for being on the show. Thank you. I appreciate it. Hi, my name is Ashton Marcus. I'm with KUCI, 88.9 hey. FM in Irvine. And I'm here with... I'm, Fren- I'm Frenchie Davis. I am playing the Nell Carter role in Ain't Misbehavin at the La Mirada Theater. And um, I'm just really excited to be a part of this cast and to be working with Tony Award-nominated Kim Page as a director. It's been an amazing experience so far. All of the characters in the show symbolize um, a piece of Fats Waller's personality. Nell's interpretation is sort of the brash, sassy, oversexed, um, and humorous side of his personality. You were perfect for this role. You remind me just like Nell Carter. You were perfect. Oh, thank you so much. I I idolized her. She Nell Carter was the first time that I saw a full-figured black woman on stage being sexy, being confident, dancing, and just comfortable in herself. So I always admired her a great deal. So it's an honor to be bringing this role to life. Do you think you were more of a performer or a musician tonight? Because you guys performed it beautifully. I don't know. I think I'm both. Equally. <laughs> I've, I've, I love to sing. I love to be on stage. I love to perform. And I feel really lucky to be able to do what I love and to share Fats Waller's music with this audience and, um, and to pay homage to Nell Carter because I admired her so much. Once again, you were fantastic. I love the performance. I Thank love you. your singing. I love the music. Thank you very much for being on the show. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. I'm so glad you enjoyed it. Hi, my name is Ashton Marcus. I'm with KUCI 88.9 FM in Irvine. And I'm here with Amber Likas. I am originally from Kansas City, Missouri. I've been here for 15 years. And I um, love performing in Southern California. I think it's a best kept secret. Uh, You don't have to be in the East Coast to enjoy great theater. I play Armelia McQueen. She is a ball of energy. Uh, well, the thing is, is that we aren't really playing those people. We are we are honoring the music of Fats Waller, and all of the characters play multiple characters to embody the characters that Fats wrote about, and the, and basically who he experienced in his own life. I love the performance. I thought you guys were fantastic. Thank I you. love the singing. I was amazed that you guys did it for like two solid hours. <laughs> yes. Yes, it was definitely tiring, but you know, the band is awesome, the direction was awesome, it's a great story to tell, and uh, it just made it fun every step of the way, so it was, you know, if you're having fun up there, it doesn't feel like work, and it doesn't feel quite as tiring. (laughs) I'll feel it tomorrow. (laughs) You know, some African-American people would be offended by this uh, type of performance, because it's kind of a little dated, kind of a little old-fashioned. 
Um, that could be, but you know what? History is meant to be shared and meant to be remembered and meant to be told. And um, all of these things happen as uncomfortable as it may be. It is our history. I'm proud of our history. And I'm proud to be doing the work that I'm doing. Right. Plus, also, a lot of famous people now are African American. Like Will Smith is like the second richest man in Hollywood. <laughs> he wouldn't be there if not for actors in the old days. That's absolutely true. I think that they all paved the way for all of us. And um, it's, it's, it's certainly something they can pass the torch, but we will always remember where we came from. Tonight, did you feel yourself more of a, a musician or a performer? Um, I felt myself as, as both, you know? I mean, I think that you have to work in tandem, and I think that the musicians and the singers and the performers, it's all, if, if one is, is, is out and something happens to one, you know, it gets a domino effect. So you got to kind of all work together and kind of play and wear all the hats. Yeah, because again, you guys, you, you guys performed beautifully. Every song, you bring so much emotion, so much character, so much of the old style that, you know, it, it just, it was just beautiful. Thank you so, so much. It, it was really a dream come true. I love this role. I love being able to sing in my in my legit soprano voice and then in my gospel-y, belty, bluesy voice. It really kind of covers the gamut. So it was challenging, but an awesome challenge. Once again, love the performance. I loved you, and you were fantastic. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you very much for being on the show. Thank you. Hi, my name is Ashton Marcus. I'm with KUCI 88.9 FM in Irvine. And I'm here with? Natalie Washam. I play Charlene and Ain't Misbehaven. It's my second time doing the role with Ken Page as the director and I'm having an amazing time. My take Charlene, she is very effervescent, very high energy. Uh, her archetype though is uh, kind of the Cotton Club girl, a very Lena Horne-esque Cotton Club girl. So there's a lot of that showgirl in her. And she is exhausting. <laughs> That was quite a performance. You guys sang for like two hours. Are yeah. you exhausted? <laughs> I'm so tired. It's not as much the singing as it is the dancing that exhausts me, but it's a really good tire, and I'm really happy with what we did tonight. Were you more of a performing tonight or a musician? I mean, because you were actually performing your songs. You know, I think they're both the same thing. Even the band. You know, they were so alive. They let their personalities show. It was fantastic. I feel like in this show especially, the cast and the band are all part of the same machine. And I love being a lady who sings with the band. I love being a part of it. I love that they're highlighted too. Some actually, so actually some African Americans would be offended by this type of, 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 of song. Maybe like minstrel songs or something like that. What are your thoughts on something like that? Oh, well, these aren't minstrel songs at all. Yeah, these, this, is, this is good black American jazz written by really one of the most prolific jazz writers, especially for someone who passed at such a young age. Again, I don't get a whole lot of this type of music because I guess it's somewhat dated. Some people don't like it, but I, I feel it's just as relevant as, say, black gospel. Things in which are, are niche, but they're still, still tremendous tremendous art. Oh, yes. Jazz is some of my favorite music. Uh, I have a, a jazz quartet that I sing with also. We sing a lot of Fats Waller, uh, songs that you heard in this show, as well as just tons of stuff from the Great American Songbook. Yes, once again, I love the performance. I loved you, and you guys are fantastic. Thank you very much for being on the show. Thank you so much. It was wonderful to meet you. Hi, my name is Ashton Marcus. I'm with KUCI, 88.9 FM in Irvine. And I'm Norm. Hi, Thomas Hobson. Um, I don't know, I've been acting my whole life, and this is my first time doing this show, so I'm really excited about joining the legacy of, of this, this, this show. I play uh, Andre in uh, Hey, Miss Behaven. Uh, Andre is, he's, a, he's just, uh, you know, we, we describe him as the man that has probably slept with everyone in the room. You know, like he's always got an angle, he's always cool, he's always smooth, he's always, he's like Ken Page says, he's like smoke. He's just smooth as, and, and fluid as smoke. I love the piece. First of all, I don't see this kind of music anymore because it's kind of old-fashioned. Yeah. Some people actually find it a little offensive. What, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, you know, I, 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 I guess I understand the sentiment. I, I feel like you have to honor your history. You have to honor and understand the time period that this music came from and what was required in that period to, to have a career. I think the great thing about this show is there's so many levels to it and then you get that black and blue number where you really slow down and you get to hear those words where, where you know he's saying I'm white on the inside but you know that doesn't matter to people I, I want to be more than what I am uh, so I think that it's fun after a whole show of like big numbers to have that moment of catharsis where the audience gets to peek behind the veil you know 
Now, you guys sang for two hours. Was it? Was that difficult? Yes. Yes. I said you need a certain amount of physical stamina to do the show, and you also need a lot of vocal stamina to do the show. So we've we've been working on both of those things for the last two and a half weeks or so. so. Yeah, I, th I loved your performance. I thought you guys were fantastic. Again, I feel that the modern day African American actors actually owe a lot to those characters because they're they're the ones who actually got you guys through the door. And it's very true, and so that's why I say you have to respect your history, and and you may not understand in the modern context what was required for this, but like the career I have, the life I lead, there were sacrifices made for that, and this show honors those sacrifices. The show honors those people, um, and so I, I'm always going to be happy to be a part of any show that respectfully tells the story of the people who fought the good fight so that I could exist in the space that I'm in. Once again, I love the performance. I thought you guys were fantastic. And actually, one more quick question. I'm not sure if I'm going to ask all the characters. I, I once asked a music teacher what's the best type of female singer there is. He said plus size African American singers. What are your thoughts on that? And listen, I if you look at the, 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 the history of music, uh, plus size black women, I don't know what spirit they reach into the ground to find, but the voices are just spectacular. Um, most of my favorite singers are plus size women. You look at like Aretha Franklin, uh, you look at even like, like a Patti LaBelle or Gladys Knight, they're not plus size in the traditional sense, but they're not tiny, tiny people either, and their voices are just booming. And I think that um, a lot of those voices also come from a lot of pain, and I think that that pain uh, it just makes their voices more connected, you know. And I think that's true for a lot of black singers in general, especially from that time period. It's just there was so much pain to pull from for all these songs. Like for us, we have to sit down and like watch the tapes and read the stories and feel that, you know. But for them, they were living in it. Once again, love the performance. Love you guys. You were fantastic. Thank you. Thank you very much for being on the show. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Hi, my name is Ashton Marcus. I'm with KUCI 88.9 FM in Irvine, and I'm here with. Frank Fontaine, saxophone player, and clarinet player. Great. I love the performance. First of all, you guys played for was like two hours. Right, right. It was an intermission in there. They were doing the singing and dance. The singers and dancers were doing the heavy lifting, but uh, the musicians were also getting after it. So we broke a sweat also. I've seen pieces of the live orchestras. I'd say you guys were a major part of the performance. I mean, there was almost no dialogue in it at all. It was nothing but music. Right. So uh, Ain't Misbehaving is, you know, the music was written by Fats Waller, a musician. So when they bring musicians into this, it's not a Broadway play where you have a pit orchestra. Musicians are hiding under the stage. We're on the stage, uh, functioning as actors and extras, or sometimes out front. So there's a lot to it, and, and lots of playing, lots of acting, lots of interaction. It's really fantastic. What kind, what kind of style of music would you would you say this is? Well, um, well, Fats Waller. You know, we're talking uh, early 1900s, so it, it, it's early jazz. Um, we're hearing a lot of the, the chords become really sophisticated. We get away from, we start moving away from the stride piano and start moving into a bit more progressive. So it, it goes from 20s, 30s, 40s, and, and, and moves on. It really covers quite a, a large period, uh, especially the early period of jazz. It's fantastic. Question, when did you first start playing music? Uh, I actually started playing in, in public schools, not at a really early age. Uh, in the fourth grade, they handed me one of those little plastic uh, recorder flutophones, and I played that with my classmates, moved through band, and continued through a marching band in high school, and, and later in, in, in into the my collegiate career. I'm always fascinated about it, because I'm actually told that being gifted in music is like being gifted in math. It's just people just don't respect it as much. They don't think you can make a lot of money, but it's... It, as far as the brain is concerned, it's just as difficult. Uh, yes. Um, there, you know, it depends on who you ask. If you ask me, I'm going to say it's easy, it's easy, it's easy. Anybody can do it. But if you ask somebody else, they'll tell you they have two left feet and two left hands and, and they're all thumbs. So asking me if it's easy, uh, you know, you could get a tainted response. I think that we're all designed to do it. You know, when we hear music, the part of the brain that receives it and registers it is the same part of the brain that your equilibrium is located in. So when you're hearing the music, it's actually moving you. And 
everybody responds to that, and I think everybody has a has some type of a musical gift. But that's again a very tainted, very biased response. Once again, I love the performance. I love the music. You guys were fantastic. The orchestra, the jazz band was just beautiful. I just loved you guys. But thank you very much for being on the show. All right, thanks for having me. Ain't misbehaving. We'll be playing at La Mirada Theater for the Performing Arts from September 15th to October 8th. For more information, go to www.lamaradatheater.com. This is Ashton Marcus, and I'm on location at Rogue Machine Theater for their presentation of Daytona. Hi, my name is Ashton Marcus. I'm with KUCI, 88.9 FM in Irvine. Uh -huh. And I'm here with... Oh, Richard Fancy. I've done a lot of theater. I started in regional theater. I've done Broadway. I've done off-Broadway. But I've, I've been living out here for, like, God, 30 years now. And I've done a lot of television and a lot of movies. And this kind of theater, which that's kind of like... That's the most important thing for me that I do because I don't get an opportunity like this in television and in movies. And, you know, a part like this and a play like this is so rewarding. And just listening, feeling the audience tonight on tenter hooks, it was just, it was great. I loved you in Side oh, <laughs> I loved you. Yes. And which character did you play? I played Billy Zimmerman in Daytona. He is a uh, boy. He's a, a very impulsive guy. He li he lives entirely on impulse. And one day he decides to do something incredibly impulsive in Daytona. And he comes back to Brooklyn to tell his brother, who is astonished and frightened, appalled, and drawn in by what he does. I love this piece. Uh, basically, this piece was about. It was about justice. Yeah. I mean, how, how do you make a person whole? If someone tremendously, like the Holocaust, if something happens to someone, yeah, how in the world do you make them whole? Right, right. And in fact, the play is a balance between, yeah, there's justice, but this is years later and these people have to live their lives. Where do the, his brother and uh, his brother's wife want to live? Do they want to go back there and take vengeance for what that scum bag did or do they want to continue to live their lives and it's they're both very valid points of view my thought was it's about the final solution it was about his final solution to the problem to get justice yes and it was right. very very ugly both yes. it was just very ugly and he's not prepared for it he's not like Clint Eastwood you know he's never killed anybody he's not a violent person at all but he sees this guy who who was in a who, who was a concentration camp guard years before and he kills him and the thing that's great about the play is that he's not a guy who's comfortable with it but he's a guy who has to do it and he brings that to his brother and his brother's wife I don't want to give away about, about the ending but basically the ending was basically a reflection on I guess a Holocaust survivor's life it's like there is no ending there is no there's no resolution. You're not going to get justice. Right. And every one of those people has taken this central tragedy in their lives and done something very different with it. The woman in the play has actually found a way to rejoice and move on. The two men haven't. Once again, I love your performance. I thought it was fantastic. Thank you. Thank you very much for being on the show. Thank you. Hi, my name is Ashton Marcus. I'm with KUCI, 88.9 FM in Irvine. And I'm here with... George Weiner. You know, I've seen you in almost <laughs> so many things. I mean, you've been you've been all over TV, all over movies. It must have been like over 500 pieces. Um, I stopped counting at 500. No, it's been it's been a good run so far. <laughs> okay, and uh, could I get some kind of brief introduction from you? Well, I'm I'm a I'm Boston native, which means I'm still a Boston guy. Because it doesn't matter how long you leave Boston, you're always part of that city. Uh, but I, my wife and I and our sons have uh, been out here for a long time, like, since 1969. Uh, and um, my sons, are, I now have a grandson, so we're into the next generation. But I, I came out here 
um, to work in mostly in TV and film. I've done a lot of theater back east, uh, and it's been uh, it's been a good a good decision on my part. I think to come here, I've enjoyed it all, Great. especially still doing theater. Great. Great. And which character did you play? I played Joe, who is the husband and brother of uh, the other two cast members, and I'm the one that. Um, is um, victimized by my brother's appearance in my apartment. And that's all I can tell anybody. Otherwise, they'll have to come see it if they want to know what the rest of the plot is all about. Joe is somebody who um, has uh, had to, because of his life experience, he's an Auschwitz survivor, uh, uh, concentration camp survivor, I should correct to say. Um, and having gone through that and some other personal dilemmas, he's kind of, um, he sits on his emotions. Um, he's very controlled. And that's how he has gotten through his life. But the presence of his brother, um, unexpectedly, after a long hiatus, uh, has, has shaken him up. So he's finding it hard to maintain that control. And I think that's what uh, his character is experiencing. That's a, this makes it fun to play. You know, uh, to be under control is interesting. To not be able to control it is even more interesting. If my viewers decide to come out and see this piece, what should they expect to see? Well, a play that uh, has a lot of intrigue. I think the, the plot is one that audiences are going to be on the edge of their chair about. There's plot developments early on that uh, really grab you. And then there's this uh, brother and family situation, something we're all familiar with. The difficulty of those situations sometimes and dealing with problems and how they manage to do it successfully or otherwise. Uh, so I, I think, um, and there's humor in it, there's a, there's a lot of fun in it, and, but it's a, a very serious play with um, a very serious uh, su text to it that uh, I think audiences are going to uh, appreciate it. It's deeply moving in many ways. Yeah, definitely. This was deeply moving. This piece was mesmerizing. The the, the cast has literally were just masters of their craft. I mean, you guys have done so much stuff, and it showed here. The audience connected with you guys. It was it was just wonderfully done. Well, thank you, and that's what that's why we we do what we do. We hope that happens, and um, appreciate it to hear hear that it has. Uh, that's always the challenge. And uh, with a good piece of material like this, is uh, it's a bit easier because it's some wonderful play. Wonderful play. Actually, strange thing about you know your character really got away with everything. He got everything he wanted to. He got resolution, and he didn't get any of his hands dirty. Uh, he didn't. Um, he had to um, reveal some things uh, that he and his wife had, had buried about their relationship. Um, so it's changed that. But he was deeply threatened by the presence of his brother, and worked very hard to make sure that that threat went away. Um, he he'd survived a lot of things, and was he going to survive? His brother coming back. That's the, what the play's about. And he's, he, was, uh, he did everything he could to make that happen. My character. Yeah. He, the brother. Your, your, the, your brother. Mm. He actually rejected his life. Pushed everything away. But at the end, it turns out you, your character pushed everything away. Yours is the one who said, I don't want this. That wasn't my life. I, that's a, I'm a different person. I, I am a different person. Uh, but I'm not lying about who I was, you know, and I think that was, that's the difference between the two brothers. He created another persona, another name, another life for himself. I, I was who I was, but I tried very hard not to revisit my painful past, and I think that's familiar to a lot of people, uh, that approach to getting through life. Once again, I really love the performance. I loved your performance in here. Thank you very much for being on the show. Well, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Hi, my name is Ashton Marcus. I'm with KUCI, 88.9 FM in Irvine. And I'm here with... I'm Sharon Shane. Oh, I love this play. This has been a dream experience for me, working with Richard Fancy, whom I've worked with many times before, and Lena DeSantos also. And our new addition, George Weiner, who's just a dream. It's been a magical experience. It really has. I, I would say the most magical of everything I've ever done. Really. Love the play. And uh, which character did you play? Oh, I play Ellie. Mm -hmm. The wife. Oh my gosh, I love this woman so much. She is a survivor. 
More than that, she is a thriver. She's been through so much with the Holocaust, lost her family, lost everything, horrible. But the one thing they could not take from her was her inner being, her soul, her soul. And that's what kept her alive. That's what kept her going through the camps, through all the horror, 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 horror. Right? So when she says we only have one life, she pays attention to that. You know, she loves life. That's why I love this character. I love this character so much. You know. I thought this piece. This piece was about the final solution. It was about one man's final solution to get to become whole to have justice. But actually, she had a solution to her life, too. Something that, again, didn't make her whole, didn't make anyone whole, but actually allowed her to, to have a solution. Yes, I think that's right, yeah. She comes to terms with it, because when he left and she suffered for those few years, it was like having the all the trauma of the Holocaust come back all over again. And now he comes back, you know, it's 30 years later, brings it all back again. But she is a thriver, as I said, and she will not let it get to her. She has survived. She loves life. She's grateful for every single second. When she wakes up in the morning, she's grateful to be here. And she has a, um, maybe I'd say a, a responsibility to all the poor people that perished in the Holocaust to live a good life, to go on, you know, to honor all those people that died. That's why she's so upset with him because he denied his heritage, he took off his his uh, identification from the camps, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like he betrayed all of those people in a way. And I had to go on. I had to go on and live with him just like I had to go on after after the concentration camps. Yeah. Back, again, like I said before, I think it's about the final solution. The Nazis kind of germinated this terrible thing that is a terrible weed or something like that, in which caused horrible things. But a little seed fell to this guy, and this guy responded when it came back to him. And that violence, it was like, almost like, you know, you, it's like evil. It was, the, you couldn't kill the evil. You tried to kill him, the, the Nazis are gone, you never have to worry about it again. But it came back, and we just can't kill it. It's like the violence of man. It's this primal, murderous instinct we have. What, what yeah. are your thoughts on that? Well, I think it's also about justice, you know? I think it's a lot about justice. He should have been brought to trial. But he, this, this man, my lover, my ex-lover, he couldn't help himself. When I say it brings a small and bitter glow to my heart, I think that I really, really, really mean that. That, you know, like, when I say to him, who are you, the angel of death? I think I'm referring to Joseph Mengele, who, as we all know, was horror, 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 and he got away. He got away. He escaped. First he escaped to, I think, Switzerland and Italy and all over Europe, and then South America. They never caught him. He died swimming, but they should have caught him. So, in some way, this guy was brought to justice in some way. It may not have been the good way, the right way, but he was. And we have a responsibility, all of us, not to forget. Not to forget. When they say never again, because it's happening all over now. Not just with Jews, but with Mexicans. I mean, all of this, what's going on with DACA, how horrible. And with the Muslim community, it's terrible. So we can't do that. We can't, you know. America is about freedom. 
freedom. Mm -hmm. Not about persecution. It's yeah. Yeah. I just wish never again that evil seed would just go away somehow. But it looks like we just can't get rid of that. It, it's coming back in North Korea. It's coming yeah. back in the Middle East. We just yeah. we, it was just never again. But it's just I'm not sure. I mean, it just may never may never resolve itself. But I love the performance. I loved you in the performance also. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you once again for being on the show. Sure. Bye. Daytona will be playing at Rogue Machine Theater from September 9th through October 30th. For more information, go to www.roguemachinetheater.net.